Hello there, YouTube. I am Lysiant, and today we're going to be playing the Quality of Death beta, playing Barony as a human barbarian. Now, my whole purpose of this playthrough is to record some footage for future tutorial videos that I want to kind of bring out, uh, you know, talking about different classes, different Different classes, different gameplay styles, different uh, strategies, and just the general gameplay. Just advice, tutorials, guides on being able to do the most that you can in Barony. Now, my first decision over here, um, I'm playing as a human, as I'm playing as a barbarian. It's literally the first options that you have as a barbarian, as, as a human. Um, now, one thing you can technically do, uh, if you choose female, you'll start with one more dex uh, at the cost of one strength. I'm going to stay as a male. That way, we'll be able to hit slightly harder. Since we're a barbarian and we want to get up and close and personal, smack things in the face, uh, I feel like it might be a better idea to grab that one extra point of strength. Now... We do start with two torches, so I'm not grabbing any torches anywhere around us. Um, I'm also not going to spend too much time just trying to explore and do everything that we can do. Um, we're just going to try and get what we need and move on to the next floors. Of course, if I can find something extra, that would be nice. Uh, but the more XP and better items is always further down into the dungeon, so usually... It's a wise idea to just keep moving down at least a few floors. Of course, we're going to do gnomes. Uh, gnomes is a little special area. It's just a bonus XP. We could technically skip it. I feel like a lot of people don't like gnomes or find gnomes difficult to deal with. Um, there's a reason why I didn't want to block against these skeletons. So I'm kind of just going to step back. Hit them, step back, hit them, and step back. Uh, that way we can avoid taking any damage because if i did block we would take some damage some damage is not that nice but over here you know you see we can just block an npc it's no big deal and then uh, we could smack whenever she has finished her attack oya is a named npc now if you find these named npcs uh, they can be worth recruiting but usually I find it's generally better just to uh, kill stuff for the XP. And in this case, we got a really, really nice hood. And probably a nice cloak as well. I don't know if it's a magic reflection. I think it's just going to be a, uh, a blessed cloak. Now this cloak, I know it's not identified. But I also know that it's not cursed. And that's the reason I am equipping it. Uh, the decrepit shield, I'm just going to drop. We're not going to rely too much on shields. Uh, here you can see is a skeleton of an axe. That is how I know that even if we block, we will take damage. If they have an axe, axes usually go through shields. You generally want to avoid fighting with something that has an axe. I'm just going to dump all of that stuff over there. Um, that's not things that I want to take with me. Not things we need. I've identified them. But, technically, you don't have to do any of that. It's just a little bit of a bonus. And I know a lot of people want to level up their appraisal. This is one way to do it. Now, appraisal isn't a very important skill to have. Uh, the most important things to identify will be identifiable uh, out of default. Unless you want to identify any of the legendary items. Uh, this includes the helmet, the weapons, the swords, the armor, just any of the legendary items. Um, you need to have 100 in appraisal. But, at the same time, all of those legendary items generally are perfectly fine to use. There's nothing wrong with them ever. So, it's not one of those things you need to do. It's just something that is nice. Uh, I'm also going to skip out on any magic this run. I don't feel like doing anything with magic. Uh, mostly just so that I can showcase the 
your brute barbarian strategy that uh which you can play as. Uh, I'm not going to be using any slingshots. We don't need the potion of confusion. I am curious though why we haven't found the exit yet. It's kind of interesting. Now, if I was speed running, this would I would consider this really bad um, RNG on the map. Uh, I believe the exit in the middle on the left, but it could also be in that tiny little pixelated section on the bottom right. Uh, I'm just gonna keep moving towards the left. I just dropped my. Mm, and again, since I'm not going to focus on magic, I can just drop these staffs. So now, if you want some extra experience, if you want some extra ability points in magic, you can spam these staffs. That way, your magic will go up. I do have a necklace of poison resistance, which is nice to have to deal with spiders. Wow. Wow, really? This, this is the spot where the exit is? <laughs> That's just crazy. Okay, so this is the level of gnomes. Uh, if you're wondering what my game settings are, it's all default. So we have minotaurs on, we have uh We have minotaurs, we've got traps, we have friendly fire, literally just everything. I'm gonna step back from this troll and let that NPC dwindle him down just a little bit. NPC is gonna get him s his ass absolutely handed to him. That's fine. That's fine. So we got a lever gloves and a lever chest plate from that NPC dying, which is really great for us. We also have a ring of teleportation. Now again, we got this from an NPC, so I know it's absolutely fine to put on. We're 100% okay to do so. Uh, once it gets identified, you'll see that it is just normal equipment. Uh, this is a funny bones. Now, we're really lucky to have gotten a funny bones to spawn while we're playing as a axe wielder. Funny bones has the legendary axe. Uh, it also comes identified which is really nice. But I think just to keep this more consistent, because not everyone's going to find the Funny Bones Axe uh, from the beginning of the game. Literally, we're on floor two right now. It's pretty crazy. If we find a couple of repair scrolls and things, we can fix that up. That's a huge axe to have. But unfortunately, it's going into the void. I'm not going to be too fussy or phased about it. Um, one other thing that I can say is blank scrolls are really great to enchant your stuff. Uh, once again, I'm not going to bother too much about it. Olympic swimming, we'll hold on to the Olympic swimming for later. Uh, once we enter the swamp biome, that's going to make a bit of a difference for us. We won't have to run over land. We can just move everywhere very smoothly, very cleanly, very easily. It's not going to be too much of a hassle. And this level seems like it's mostly cleared out. Um, you could, if you really want, run around, explore, find all of the minute cracks. But really, you don't need to uh, delve in too much detail. Which lever didn't I pull? Did I pull this one? No. So, what's really nice is if you listen carefully, you can hear wherever the gate goes open or wherever it closes. So this one should open. I'm gonna just, you know, be quiet here for a second. You can hear it's like a slow pulling of the, uh, it's like a rolling sound, versus closing it will be more of a slammy sound. Doof, doof. Versus, ooh, you know? I know, I know. Like, I'm really great at sound effects. Um, if we're gonna fight this troll, and I really wanna fight this troll for some extra experience, um, I'm just going to slap him in the back, and I'm going to use a tomahawk just to bait him away from me. And then we'll bait him back here, throw a few more tomahawks, uh, just get behind him, do a full power strike, just to do some extra damage, and that troll is no more. 
So I, again, you know, you could run around, you could explore every last detail of this place, but it's not really necessary. Um, you'll get plenty of what you need just by playing the game. Now, I do plan on making a gnome's guide, but there's always a gnome in this corner. It's always worth checking him out. And there's always a gnome down over here. Now, this guy has a staff, so that's really good for us. We can just uh, hit him around the corner so that he doesn't do anything to us. Need to dodge here. And just quickly grab a new staff. So we have six health. That's not great. It's not horrible either. Because we have a magic staff. So we can just zap things like that. Uh, get rid of them. Keep moving. I'm just going to drop all of this quickly. If we see any any gnomes with a with a lantern, that's going to be our biggest threat right now. We want to make sure we don't get lanterned. Ooh, okay. So, what happened there? Whenever you use the Staff of Lightning, there will be a bit of light that comes off. And, unfortunately, that light gives away your, situ your position, and if there's any Lightning Staff gnome that sees you, you know, you're going to get zapped. But... Again, it's not a big deal, you know, you go gnomes because it's pretty early in a run. If you do survive, it's beautiful. If you do die, it's not a big deal. We're just going to run this back and we will most likely find some success in gnomes this time. So again, this guy has an axe. This guy also has an axe. Uh, I'm going to avoid taking direct damage from them. Uh, this guy also has an axe. So again, I'm not going to block using my shield, uh, but this is just a rat. Rats, they can't get through your shield, they won't do extra damage to you, you can easily just block their damage. But anything with an axe, you gotta be careful. Is this, a, this is a troll in here, that's pretty really nice. I'm just going to kite him backwards, uh, he did get one hit off on us, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. On the other side, you know, we just got two levels from killing him. So, absolutely worth it. Again, this guy ha doesn't have an axe. He just has a sword, so we can easily just block his attacks using our shields. Uh, same thing over here. There's a rat. We can just block, do a little bit of a dance, a little shuffle, uh, back and forth. I also see there's two more skeletons through that gateway, but there isn't an easy path to get there. Suppose we can come in over here, yeah. One has an axe, one has a spear. Uh, my priority is going to be to try and get the guy of an axe. I blocked her anyway, because I wouldn't have been able to avoid the, uh, the damage that he dealt towards me. He was right there, he was going to hit me. Um, so it's better to then just block, avoid some of the damage. Rather than... Um, trying to do a back step if you will get struck regardless and I'm gonna drop the cheese the cheese isn't too big of a deal I'm also gonna equip this uh, worn bronze axe just because why not and as you can tell I'm moving a little bit slower now I'm not as fast anymore that is because I'm carrying too much you can see over there inventory weight penalty is negative 33% so we're moving at two-thirds of our normal speed um, just because we're carrying too much. So the best way to deal with that is just to start dumping any of all of these things. And here you can tell uh, we're moving much faster. It's only negative 17%. Uh, you don't need to have your movement speed at 100% all the time. But obviously being able to move fast enough to do what you want to do is kind of important. Uh, I'm going to equip this uh, Iron Helm. Now the Iron Helm is decrepit, which means it could break at any point in time. The reason why I'm equipping it is because it has two armor versus the one armor from the lever helmet. And that's just so that I... That's just so that I can... Uh, oh boy. The spider. <laughs> yeah, poison's not that fun. Um, 
Okay, so the one extra armor, that just is one point of damage to, that we'll avoid. So it's definitely worth doing. Now, we could use these fountains. Sometimes they'll spawn free XP. Other times they will heal you. Sometimes they will give you some sort of a debuff, like uh, paralyzing you or making you blind. Um, sometimes a little best pleasure equipment. And blast equipment is always good to have. It's extra bonus damage on top of what you have already. Or if you're wearing armor, then it's extra protection on top of what you already have. So that's always good. And what we just found is four extra tomahawks. It's cursed. This is blast. Again, we're not doing anything with magic. Um, we just found four extra tomahawks. Tomahawks is a good ranged option. If we want to do something like uh, make this skeleton a little bit weaker so that we can just one-shot him, or if we want to, you know, attack him from range, make sure he doesn't get to us at all, make sure we keep ourselves safe, um, that's an option. But you can also just windle them down. I'm, again, going to throw away the extra tomahawks, which you shouldn't do. If you go to gnomes, it's definitely worth having those, but I'm going to toss them away uh, to make our lives a little bit more difficult in gnomes, just to show you that it is very possible to do gnomes without any of this, uh, this extra stuff. Okay, there we go. That's opened up gnomes. You can, again, listen out for it. Ring of Strength would have been great if it wasn't cursed. Um, now, over here... I'm going to drop these two gems. I don't usually care too much about money. I am going to drink the booze just so that we get ourselves a little bit extra health. The extra health is so that we can survive just a little bit longer. Now, one of those lightning hits does 25 points of damage. So if we have 50 health, that means we'll be able to survive two hits. Now, we took one hit already, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. At least we managed to get ourselves one Staff of Lightning. I usually advise using these on trolls and on gnomes, um, but if you find that there's a, a melee gnome like this, it's, it's okay to get rid of him. It's just extra XP at the end of the day. But the main reason you'd want to use these is to kill trolls or to kill gnomes with staffs. I would prefer killing gnomes with staffs just because um, the more staffs you have, the more options you have. So I'm just gonna, again, weaken them with the, uh, the tomahawks. And then I'll use my shield to just block this one. This one I ended up... Uh, doing a stealth attack on. And this troll... Ooh, I should have not taken that, that hit over there. This troll is gonna step back, and we're just gonna finish him. Uh, the other troll, we're just gonna go do Tomahawk's Axe, do a quick stealth attack that should get him weak enough, or is it just one hit? And uh, we need to grab that Tomahawk again. Uh, one bad thing that happened here is our shield broke. Which isn't the end of the world, but it does make it a little bit more difficult for us to, you know, be able to protect ourselves. You can't just block. You can't just block with uh, a torch. I mean, you could. You can totally use torches to block. You'll still get the AC. It's a valid option. Um, the problem with that is that you'll um, make a lot of light and if there's a lot of light, there might be another gnome nearby down one of the passageways that sees you. Which is not something that you want. So over here, that was unfortunate. Our lightning staff broke and I didn't put a new one on my hotbar. Um, but again, it's not the end of the day. I'm just going to put on this cloak, grab that shield, drop this in the corner. Uh, since we have a lantern... Since we have a lantern, I'm thinking uh, we can drop any extra torches and things we have. No, I don't see those in my inventory currently. 
I'm just gonna zap him. I'm not gonna be too bothered with uh, keeping all of the staffs. I like to try and get three pickaxes for us to uh, take with us on our journey. That is just what we can uh, dig through all of the walls and stuff that we want to dig through. This one's excellent, so I'm actually going to equip the other the worn one. Now, over here you can see there's a gnome with a lantern. You always want to keep your eyes open for any sort of light coming from doors. Uh, I am closing these doors. There's a reason for that. Um, if you keep the doors open, the trolls will just wander on in. If you close the doors, the trolls will start hitting the doors first, giving you some chance to know that a troll is coming. It also buys you time in case you want to deal with a, a lightning gnome or a pickaxe gnome or something like that. And this is the other reason that I like to close doors. Uh, we heard the door open before we heard the gnome was there. That gave us a chance to react before he was able to turn a corner and just zap us. So, if you are planning on doing things in here, uh, it's definitely worth considering keeping doors closed. Uh, there's the porches, there's the extra. So here you can hear the do doors being hit by this troll. Um, unfortunately, my staff broke. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this on my hotbar. And then this troll, I'm actually just gonna deal with uh, ranged and melee. You know, just get rid of him. That shield that just threw up, that could have been really, really good RNG for us. Chances are, that might just be a regular steel shield. But, if you look at the value of it, it's 190. There's a small chance that this steel shield uh, has the magic reflection. Sorry, not magic reflection, the um, magic resistance perk. And if it does, that is very good news for us. Because that makes us a little bit tankier. So we have a whole bunch of extra pickaxes that we technically don't need. I'm just going to drop them all in a corner, keep the cursed one. Uh, we can run around this level, explore, grab a whole lot of gold. I'll show you guys that quickly. Uh, if you're new to Barony, I haven't seen that before. Usually I use cursed pickaxes to do that. But we have so many pickaxes, not so many staffs, unfortunately. So I'm just going to drop those two staffs, make sure that we have them for later. A cloak we don't need. Now, all of these gems, again, I'm not too phased about getting all of the gold that we can get. So I'm just going to drop them. Uh, we saw this troll. Now, because we didn't close that door, he just wandered off in. That surprised me. We'll just close the door, make sure that we're kind of safe in here. And all of the gems that I've identified, I'm just going to drop. I'm also going to drop this wooden shield, uh, because the one that we currently have is blessed. So we'll get two armor instead of just the one armor. Uh, this is a steel shield of magic resistance, but unfortunately it's cursed. So one of the things I'm going to look out for um, in shops would be something of remove curse. Uh, we can find that at a shop that sells staffs, magical staffs. Uh, we could find that at a shop at a general store, we can find it at a bookstore, we can find it at a gem store. They also like to sell the removed cursed uh, scrolls, so definitely worth keeping our eyes open. Just gonna get rid of these guys. We don't have to stress too much about using staffs to kill them anymore, as we already have killed most of the things, most of the possible threats, which means we can just deal with these guys one at a time. I'm just gonna upgrade that to drop this extra gem. And then I feel like we're set up enough to just run off and start mining all of the gold in this level. Um, now one of the things I like to do is I like to put these on my hotbar just to make just to make uh, make do of having them. And I'm going to keep the blessed pickaxes. Uh, it's mostly just so that they stand out. I don't believe blessed pickaxes have any extra bonuses other than they will do more damage. 
which, you know, you're not really going to be using a pickaxe to try and kill something. So it's not really much of a bonus. Okay, so there's a gnome. A lightning gnome. I can't really deal with them because I'm holding a cursed pickaxe. Uh, I could just break a bunch of walls. Grab some of these rocks. And, you know, just kill these gnomes at range using rocks. Oh, if you're a little bit afraid, this is a completely viable strategy. Um, you know, if you can kill a pickaxe gnome as your first kill, at least you'll know for sure that you'll be able to do something. Okay, we're just gonna put that, put this on the hotbar, and kind of just explore through here looking for gold. Don't want to deal with this pickaxe gnome. I could poke my head out. Frustrating to equip cursed items. Okay, so let's just drop that. Again, grab some stones. So we can kill this gnome using stones. And I'm going to use these corners to my advantage. If he can't see me, he won't zap me. But we have the perfect opportunity to, you know, line him up. Just timing our shots uh, with him walking around a corner. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need this. Uh, I am going to keep the tomahawks. And again, at this point in the game, we don't need tomahawks anymore. So if we want to get rid of them, we totally have that option. But I am going to keep looking for a little bit more gold. You don't need to get all of this gold. In fact, we have two and a half thousand. Um, for me, personally, that's more than enough. I am perfectly happy with that. But... An aged fish. A slightly aged. I could explain food. So food... If you have something that's slightly aged, there's a slight chance that you'll suffer from food poisoning, which causes you to puke. Um, if it's fresh, like everything else that we have except for the bread, there's zero chance. It'll always be good, unless the fish was cursed. Okay, so here's, here's the scrolls of charging, which is unfortunate. You know, we could keep them... We can use them to charge a enchanted feather, we could use them to ch uh, charge up our staffs, or even fix some of our jewelry and things. But for the most part, I'm not too phased with them. I'm just gonna go down here, we're gonna get this helmet. Now this is the legendary helmet. You can just grab that over there. I like to break the two on the side. Um, they're the main things that'll hit you if you go through the middle. It's also possible for you to open up the the um the, 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 let me show you it's it's possible to open up these bars at the the trader there's a little lever up there i'll head back and show you that quickly um i don't normally bother with that for the most part you'll get plenty of pickaxes and plenty of electric staffs um you just have to bash your way through and there's always gold in that wall so this is the lever if you flip that lever and it'll open up the gates. I'm going to keep them close, just so that I don't accidentally zap myself going in that direction. And, again, I'm not going to be too fussy trying to get all of the gold that we can. I'm just going to grab stuff on our way back to the middle. I'll drop the extra pickaxes that we have, and then we'll move on. Because there's plenty, there's plenty in this game. You really don't need to min-max and grab every single thing and feel like you need to 100% every floor. Uh, that's just not necessary. So this is one of those negative effects. We're currently confused. If I move my mouse to the right, the character will turn to the left. Same if I move to the left. If I move forwards, I'll move backwards. And if I move backwards, I'll move forwards. Uh, we're lucky. The effect just wore off as this lightning gnome moved in. So it's not too big of a deal. Uh, those negative status effects will last as long as, uh, as it depends on your constitution. So, um, if you read the second thing there, it reduces the duration of negative status effects. 
that is the reason why uh, that doesn't last as long as it did. And I'm just going to drop these extra gems. We don't need them. I'm also going to drop this extra pickaxe. Again, we don't need it. Uh, all of these extra shields. Technically, we don't need it. I'm going to drop the worn ones. And then I'll equip that worn one. I'll move the lantern to slot 5. Uh, the lantern's blessed, so if I equip the lantern... Uh, if you look at my AC over here, it'll increase my AC by 1. So it's always nice to grab a Blast Lantern if you know that you're going to be running around and doing stuff. Mm, now I also have plenty of pickaxes, I mean of uh, of staffs here. I feel like I'm just going to use some of them. All of these guys are excellent except for that one there that's serviceable. We'll use that for the Underworld. Now again, you don't need to go gnomes, you don't need to go to the Underworld. I just find that... You can kind of consistently get a lot of experience points. It just helps to... It helps to get you started really early on. Uh, we are still pretty naked. And what the heck just killed these guys? What just happened? That is so interesting. Huh. No idea why that lever just randomly killed the skeletons. It's unfortunate. Um, you know, that's that's experience we just lost. And experience, I'd say, is the more important thing rather than worrying too much about other stuff. Now, this guy, he's got a chest plate for us. Again, this is a human. Human gear is always guaranteed to be good. Let's turn around, zap that boy. Uh, unfortunately, I'll tap there for a brief moment which caused me to lose a little bit of health, but it's no big deal. Um, you might also be wondering why I'm collecting all of these axes. That is mostly just because I am... Um, my, my axe is going to end up breaking, right? And the moment my axe breaks, I need some sort of a backup weapon. So I'm just going to collect those for as long as we can. And let's see, I have 17 armor. This troll won't be able to hurt me. I just need to make sure that I block his hits. And then we can easily tank these trolls. We can tank almost everything in the game at this point. Maybe not the Minotaur or anything like that, but hey, you know what? It's, we'll get there. Eventually. Assuming, assuming I get enough uh, points in blocking or enough gear or equipment or uh, stat rolls in constitution. Unfortunately, this character doesn't normally roll uh, constitution, so that's very unlikely. I have a fresh fish. It could keep exploring this place, but honestly, I don't feel like it. Um, and normally, I'm not too fast with breaking doors down. It's just that one is the most direct path. I don't feel like looping all the way around to try and get to the uh, exit. Okay, so at this point... That skeleton wasn't too much out of my way. That's why I went for him. Uh, we're just going to go on through to the next floor, which will be floor number four. Um, floor number four isn't too big of a deal. There should just be a few things to kill, and then we'll head to the underworld. Now, the reason I like going to the underworld is it's a ton of experience. And we're going to go there just to show you that even if you don't wield magic or don't have levitation, it is quite possible for you to... Um, quite possible for you to get a lot of experience. Right now we're level 13. Um, once I go to the underworld, I can show you that we'll have a lot more. And I'm just going to zap Thumpus over here because I don't feel like dealing with him and his merry minions. But his minions will give us some extra staffs of lightning. Those could come in handy. Now, uh, we've also found a shop over here. Usually the shops have this wooden border around them. This one specifically is selling archery. Um, he might have some scrolls of repair. I'll, I'll pop on in. It's worth seeing what he has. It doesn't mean I have to purchase anything. Now, he's got five potions of invisibility. That's really, really good for us if we want that. He's also selling some excellent knuckles. Um, not necessary, but I'm going to buy them anyway just because why not. I'm also going to eat two fish. 
once you get a message that says you're really full now, um, usually that means that you shouldn't eat anymore. And if you don't get that message, it means you can keep eating a little bit longer. Kill the troll. Troll's always good XP. Um, there should be a human in here. This one has a bow, and there's also a rat. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, smack the rat. We'll block this guy's uh, attack. Uh, it could use his steel, his worn iron breastplate, and it might be a good idea. I know we're moving a little bit slow right now. It's because we're carrying so many extra weapons. Uh, the extra shields, all of the pickaxes, all of the staffs, it's all weighing us down slowly but surely. But we're not going to be too bothered. We're just going to go on through. I will, since I am planning on returning here, I'm just going to drop the majority of the weapons. And I'm going to drop... Shouldn't have dropped the, that specific pickaxe. That one was serviceable which means it's going to break sooner than anything else, um, considering that I want it to break so that I can get rid of it. I'm going to just do that. Uh, the, the bronze tomahawks and this this uh, serviceable chakram, we're not going to use them here. We're rather just going to equip ourselves or put these um, staffs of lightning on our hotbar. And we're just going to poke our head out. Use a lantern, make ourselves a very easy target for the imps to see uh, just run around a little bit see if we can't spot anything i only heard one in he might not be flying anywhere hmm it's just yoing that so long uh yeet this chakra room spell book of healing now i know i said that i didn't want to do any magic but that book, that faded book, we can learn that right now. I don't know how, we only have... Oh, it's because of the artifact column. It's giving us enough intelligence. There we go, we've got 10 intelligence plus the uh, 10 of the skill points. Uh, this imp, we're just going to strafe sideways while we zap him. That's uh, three lightning strikes and they should die. And because I don't see too much else, I'm just going to use the, the shrine. Make our way through. There's a ghoul. I'm not too bothered with the ghouls. You don't need to waste your staffs of magic to zap them. Uh, skeletons with arrows. They could become really annoying, you know, hitting you backwards like that. Um, so sometimes it might be worth doing that. Uh, one of these reward is staff number two. I'd rather just zap them, get rid of them, than uh, constantly be knocked back and try to play around an edge. Because that's the only way that I would be able to deal with them. Drop this, drop that. A spellbook of Cold. Really great book to deal with. Um, really great book to deal with any sort of minotaur or heavy hitting creature which you want to keep at a distance. Yo, Smokey! What's up, man? Welcome in, welcome in. We're in the underworld right now at floor 6, but welcome in. Um, ooh, I don't like being drunk. That's gonna make our aim be quite bad. Now, the extra healing, I'm gonna hold on to these books. I will use these books as if I, I don't have any points in magic and I can't learn them. Um, it's definitely worth keeping. If you are playing any sort of a character, I'd highly suggest learning any and all magic and trying to become as good at magic as possible, even if your class inherently doesn't do magic but i'm gonna stick with our theme of just avoiding any of old magical spells um that includes the cold book now remember that cold book is very very valuable it can literally save your life up against the minotaur or any sort of a, a powerful foe like a cockatrice always drink from your sinks trying to get some extra trying to get some extra um Enemies to spawn, these slimes are also really good experience. Uh, one really nice thing that we just found is this magic resistance ring. I'd say magic resistance is probably one of the best rings in the game. Because uh, if you wear a single ring, it decreases the magic damage you take by 50%. So, in gnomes, instead of taking 25 damage, 
that would literally be a quarter of our health will only take 12 damage, which is about 10% of our health. Um, definitely worth using magic resistance if you can. In fact, I'm just going to toss that protection ring over there. We're not going to use the poison book. I am not doing anything with magic. Now, here is some steel boots. It looks like it's just regular steel boots. You can kind of tell whether it's going to be levitation or feather, depending on the, the value of it. Now, this one only has a value of 20. Um, that tells me that it's pretty much useless. And again, since I am here, since I am grabbing things or can grab these things, I'm just going to grab what I see. You don't need to grab everything. You don't need the max appraisal level to play. Strangulation amulet. Absolutely lovely. Always my favorite. I honestly hate those things. <laughs> Even if I play a succubus, I never really use them. Unless I have literally no mana and I know that I can get away with sacrificing just a little bit of health. Uh, so I just came back to the beginning so that we can grab all of our axes, all of our uh, shields and things. Because right now we are going to go to the second floor of the underworld to get a little bit more XP. This one was honestly kind of disappointing. It wasn't too much for us over here. And here we go. This is where we want to be. So... Uh, again, two, three, I'm going to put this one on five, equip this magic staff, because we are entering the underworld again. And I'm just going to drop those so that we have a little bit more mobility. I'm going to drop those. Mm, I'm thinking about dropping the shields as well, just because why not? Be a little bit faster. Now, if you hear that... It almost sounds like Darth Vader breathing. That cold. That noise. That is the sound of a shadow. Uh, the second floor of the underworld, specifically floor 7, will always have a shadow. And that shadow usually has the legendary bow. I'm just doing quick, a quick zap over here, seeing if I can't... Um, Get that imp. We can kill that imp before it gets towards us. Uh, that would be great. I'm going to grab the necklace because that might be magic reflection. Speaking of which, I did uh, put on a magic reflection cloak from earlier, which makes us a lot safer out here. Okay, hold on. I'm going to equip that. So this is the, the shadow that has the, the bow. And you can kind of tell that he just teleported behind us. Um, usually I like to kill them before they get the chance to do that, but if you're high enough level, you have enough health, it's not too big of a deal to take care of them quickly and easily. Of course, if you're not high enough level, um, they can become problematic. Okay, that imp is probably going to head towards my location right now. I would assume he is coming from this general direction. Yeah. So that's the one we hit once, uh, a little earlier. The one that uh, we saw. And they, even if, even if they don't know where you teleported to, um, they still know your location. And they'll just always make their way towards you. So I find that it's better to take care of that one threat that you kind of know is there, and um, move on from there. Just deal with him, check if we get any slimes to spawn, unfortunately there's no slimes, uh, and I'm just going to identify this. Unfortunately, the helmet is taking up a lot of our appraisal time, I don't like that, but it is what it is. Uh, blast crossbow, that's actually really nice to have. Got a magic reflection amulet as well, which I'm not going to use. I will wield this book, and I'll use this book. Like I said, you know, I don't mind using the books uh, as an offhand thing during this run, but for the most part, I'm going to avoid learning any magical spells. And 33 minutes into the run, I feel like we've basically cleared the second floor of the underworld. I'm not going to bother with picking up the extra pickaxes or anything, uh, three is pretty much good enough to get us through the run. Don't need this. 
This is a blessed Ring of Magic Resistance, which gives us uh, two bonus AC or armor, which means if anything hits us physically, uh, we will take two less points of damage. So worth, worth grabbing, absolutely worth grabbing. Also, I ate a single piece of meat back there, and as you saw, it said that we were really full. This just means don't eat anymore. I'm also not going to bother too much of the gold, I'm just here for the experience. Now, you don't need to come to the underworld. I'll probably, in future runs, just uh, purposefully skip everything. But it's definitely worth doing. I'm just coming here to kind of showcase... Um, that it's very possible to survive very easily. In fact, we only took, I think, one hit from the one shadow. Which is kind of nice. Also, this helmet, it gives you eight intelligence. You don't need the intelligence. Um, it's usually better on spellcasters. Detect food, we don't need. Cave beasts, we don't need. This magic reflection. I'm going to hold on to the magic reflection until later. We can use that magic reflection for uh, boss fights if we so choose. Uh, and my inventory is a bit of a mess. It's really full right now. I don't like that. Uh, so I'm just going to drop some of these weaker shields. This one is three armor. This one's two armor. That one's two armor. This one has the magic resistance. Uh, now, if we use the ring and the shield at the same time, we will have 66 percent magic resistance which is huge that means we can survive three times as long in the boss fights now i don't know about you but surviving three times as long in a boss fight really sounds like a worthwhile endeavor uh, this group of goblins are asleep that one unfortunately looks like it has some magic reflection we're just gonna run up and smack him i guess because he just broke our cloak. Uh, all of this damage we can tank because of how powerful we are. I'm not too concerned with the damage we were taking over there. Uh, we also have this book of healing that we can use. I'll just wield the extra healing right now. Uh, give us a little bit of a boost. In fact, I should probably just drop these books and show you how to play the game without having the healing as a backup. So I'm actually just going to do that. I'm just going to drop the healing books. And then we'll just play more of a consistent, safe style. This is the special exit, or the secret exit. Now, there's normally no reason not to take these. But one thing that I can say is uh, if you run through here, there's a small chance the boulders will crush you. I like to just toss in a couple of throwing weapons. That generally triggers them. And then you can just run away safely. And if you don't have a throwing weapon, you can literally stand one block away from it. Just drop a singular item. In fact, I'll, I'll just I'll showcase that in the next area. Let's have our torch equipped. So I'm just gonna stand here to the side. Uh, also, if you ever see this message. This, this message of uh, you sent the gods of Sokoban aiding your path. That usually happens because of a boulder breaking. Now, these two rocks, they're useless rocks. However, whenever you see that message, there will always be a rough luck stone, which decreases your carry weight by 20. If you want to collect these, it's definitely possible to decrease the amount of uh, weight that you have, which will allow you to run a little bit faster. Now, if you look over here, we are currently suffering a 35% speed penalty due to the inventory weight that we have, but uh, we're moving fast enough without anything. And I'd much rather at this point not worry about having the, the weight as much as I want to make sure that I have the extra inventory slots. We can just grab all of this stuff and appraise all of that quickly because it's a little pile. And remember what I said, you don't need to always explore everything. You can just explore the bare minimum. Half of a map is fine, um, especially if you're high enough level. Uh, so here we're finding some bubbly potions of extra healing, and some normal healing potions. 
Uh, I'm gonna buy these. We can also buy more blank scrolls if we want to enchant our axe later on. Mm, thinking about doing that. That's a brand new scroll. So since we already have one, I think I'm just gonna go with it. I'm also gonna use this scroll of food and then eat the extra things. We're really full after eating that apple. So don't wanna eat too much else, but apples, they're generally not too much. Uh, we can buy one of these Alembics, which, it, which would be nice to combine any potions or craft future potions, but again, I'm gonna be playing this character more in a way that's relatable. We're not gonna have everything in the game, We're not gonna be able to do everything in the game. I just tossed away my tomahawk, which kind of sucks. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I'm not gonna be too bothered. Uh, this area is very easy and cheesy experience if you have big access. If you don't have big access, it's still really good experience, but usually what I like to do is just break these walls uh, and then just one tap, just one click, you know, not no no power hits or anything, uh, just to raise our axe ability a little bit more. Also, we're getting really good experience from killing the trolls themselves. If you see, we went from 50 all the way up to like 75. Uh, so we kill these five trolls. That is a guaranteed level. Uh, we also managed to get rid of one of the extra pickaxes, which is nice. There we go, we leveled up. Um, with these cages, you can do the same thing. But I advise being careful, because if there's a if there's a goblin in here with a staff or a bow and fire arrows, um, it's very dangerous to try and kill them through the bars. They tend to... That one has knockback arrows, so I'm not too afraid of him. But they tend to shoot you through the arrows. I mean, through, the, through these little slots, so just be careful. I'm gonna... There we go. Uh, that's a little bit of a demonstration of what they do. I'm just gonna, you know, throw a few stones through here. Uh, just kill him that way, but I don't have to stress too much about him. And I'm gonna open up the bars to get rid of the other goblin over here. Do I have any early game healer tips? I have plenty. Um, healers, they don't have a lot of strength, so you can't carry too much. But essentially, a healer is a tank mage. You'll want to use your staff of slow to slow down an enemy. Uh, it's a shame I don't have the book of cold anymore. In fact, I'm gonna kind of show you over here. This isn't the exact same. I'll I'll just waste this this staff of lightning. I'm not gonna be using it. So essentially, what you want to do is you'll want to use the staff of slow on your target. Your target will start running towards you. You'll want to hit them, step back, hit them, step back, and you just kind of want to step backwards while hitting them uh, while they're slowed. That way, you'll able be able to do as much damage as possible without needing to use magic. Uh, the moment you start finding any offensive spells, you'll be able to do a lot more. Then you can start using your uh, you start using your magic to deal with them. Again, I'm not too bothered by looting everything, but you can come over here, loot all of these chests. Generally, they don't have too much of value. Sometimes you'll find something really nice. Uh, one thing I can suggest, if you have grabbed this green orb, do not step on these pressure plates. The gray pressure plates uh, will activate all of the boulder traps. But you can come over here, put the green orb down, and grab a lot of gold. This is also why I say you don't have to worry too much about uh, grabbing each and every bit of item in the game. We're at 5,000 gold. Uh, we can essentially afford a plus three crystal axe or other items that we so choose. It's really not too much of a deal. Uh, the lever that I flicked that's in the third room, that lever opens up this gate over here, which again just allows you to grab a little bit more gold. I'm not too fussed about the gold, but what I do want is to listen for it. Three goblins just spawned in. And we're just gonna run up and smack him in the face. Block his attack because he doesn't have an axe. And there might be... Okay, this guy isn't an archer or a mage. Sometimes uh, a mage with a staff of fire will spawn and 
or an archer with, again, fire arrows will spawn, which is not that nice. But, um, yeah, you, you tend to want to avoid this. So this, this is what I was saying earlier. You could use your throwing weapons. I don't have any more. But you can also just drop an item, and that will trigger the boulders, making sure that you don't have to uh, put your own body in danger. You can just drop an item and get the heck out of there uh, until you have all of the boulders spawned in. And at that point, you know this is open, and you can go and get all of the XP from the secret level. We did get quite lucky there, that we don't have to use our pickaxe, but again, you don't... It's, it's If you had three pickaxes, that's all you need for the rest of the game. Uh, this guy might have some scrolls of repair, no, nope, destroy armor. He also has some potions of healing, and the place we are about to go is very dangerous, so... Hopefully, that'll keep us safe. Or give us a little extra fallback option. I'm just gonna run free here, grab a few items. Uh, it is a miniature level, so you kind of want to play a little bit faster, but for the most part, you don't have to stress too much about pool clearing each and every level in the game. In fact, I think we've not done... Except maybe for the first floor. We might have full cleared the first floor, and that was only because we literally didn't find the exit. If we found the exit sooner, um, that would have been great. So, uh, there's a few strategies that you can do in this area. Uh, the first is you can flick this lever over here. That opens up the bottom right corner. Uh, let me open up my map. Uh, the bottom right corner, roughly down here somewhere, you will be able to go across some water. The ghouls won't be able to hit you over there. Um, in the top right corner so up over here uh, there's a trap door if you go through this trap door there's a guaranteed tent opener there is something random over there this time we got a ring sometimes you'll find a lockpick and there's a guaranteed lockpick over here and also four bubbly potions of levitation now that's going to be my backup strat using the levitation potions also, if you flick this lever, you will open up the waterfall to a little secret area uh, where you can use the set lockpick that we just found to pick a couple of chests. And I'm just going to quickly show you that. This is generally the backup strat. Um, another backup strat. So there's three strats. You can either just brute force your way through. If you have some healing spells, and we threw away our healing magic, so we don't have that, but we do have some healing potions we could potentially use. Uh, I'm just going to put these on my hotbar quickly, just... just in case. Um, I also have two booze where we can drink. Uh, this confusion potion is nice, but not necessary. This ring of conflict is also really useful over here. If you put that on, just the, the ghouls will start attacking each other. While they're busy attacking each other, you can... Um, kill them. In fact, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna put that over here. And I am gonna put my other ring... My other ring, the magic resistance one, over here. Um, just so that I can showcase that. But this is the secret area. Well, this is the secret area. There's three chests. They will always be locked, but you can always use that lockpick to come here and unlock these... Um, these chests or you can use like a book of opening or a staff of opening or something. Again, I'm not too fussed with grabbing all of the loot in the game. You really don't need to and I'm gonna just showcase that. Um, we're gonna equip this decrepit bronze axe. It's probably gonna break during the fight. So I'm gonna equip another axe just so... I'm gonna put another axe on my hotbar just so that we once it breaks we can essentially drop it. We don't need to worry about it anymore. And we can just keep on uh, fighting by pressing the one hotkey. Um, now, the backup strat, I said there were three. We're just going to fight our way through. And we're going to use levitation. Uh, but if you don't want to use the levitation potions, or if you don't want to fight your way through, or if you don't have a ring of conflict, um, what you can do is you can use light, let the ghouls see you, drag the ghouls all the way back here, and then hit them across the water. Uh, as long as you stand far enough back and inch your way forwards, they won't be able to touch you. 
And for the most part, you can run in here, you can uh, open up all the doors, you can uh, stand by the fireplace, be cozy, you don't need to worry about anything. Uh, the ghouls won't spawn for you entering, unless you're playing the base game. The base game, the moment you go deep enough, uh, the, the gravestones will spawn. And once those gravestones spawn, you're in trouble. That means that uh, the NPCs will start coming in and giving you some trouble. You can even open up these chests. I'll just prove it. You'll see there's no gravestones. You can look in the chests and that's fine. But the moment you grab anything out of any of these chests... Okay, I guess not that one. Maybe not out of the chests. Hold on. I just learned something new. Let's uh, grab the staff. Okay, so you can grab things out of the chests and then nothing will spawn. But the moment you grab something off of the floor, so that's either the gold or um, these boots over here, then the gravestones will spawn. And those gravestones, they're activated essentially based off of uh, sound. If you're walking near them, they will be triggered and the ghouls will start giving you some grief. Um, I'm not going to be using the lantern. I'm going to be using a shield. I'll probably use the uh, better shield, but I have the 3 AC instead of the 2 AC shield. Um, just so that we can take a little bit more damage. It's not too big of a deal, but hey, you know what? It's a thing. It's fair. Okay, so once we exit over here and walk to roughly where my crosser is, uh, the ghouls will start spawning in. I should probably be using the iron axes for this i probably won't have enough damage this place is really good to level up your axe skills or any sort of weapon skills um ranged or anything like that uh so right now we've got 76 in axes and i will show you that it's possible to deal with them just normally charged power attacks once your weapons start shaking like that um definitely something you want to do for the first hit and then you can just smack them a few times after. For the most part, once you're in combat like this, you just have to deal with it. You could run away, you could slow them, you could kite them, you could do all of that stuff. Um, for the most part, I'm not going to be too fussy. Uh, I did say that I was going to show what this Ring of Conflict does. So let me go this way, trigger a few more ghouls, and then showcase the ring of conflict so we're just gonna get this guy while they're one on one you can step back like that get a bit of a distance um these ghouls are all fighting over here nope okay so right now i'm taking too much damage my health is a bit low um, I'd want to use one of the extra healing potions at this point. Uh, I can also see that there's a bunch of ghouls right next to me. Um, there you go, some of them are fighting. Uh, and then you can just come here and do the final blows. You gotta be careful using the Ring of Conflict if you want experience. Because the Ring of Conflict, because they're attacking each other, killing each other, you're not getting any experience for the kills that the ghouls make. Uh, also, right now, you can see we're levitating. We use the levitation potion. This is a another, another strategy. You can just levitate over the edge over here, uh, bait them into coming near you, and hit them. But you need to be very careful if you're going to do this. You need to constantly keep your eye on that levitation icon just above my health bar. Uh, the moment that starts flashing, and to make sure that I head over... Um, any solid ground just so that you don't fall into oblivion and instantly get killed. Uh, so there you go, you see it's currently flashing. Um, so I'm just going to head over the regular floor. And I feel like we've killed most of the ghouls at this point, so it's not too big of a deal. Um, a weird person in my comments. Hello, what's up? Uh, what's crack -a lacking Didn't know I was on YouTube? I am on YouTube, but I'm also technically not on YouTube. Uh, if you look at my channel, uh, I've only uploaded a couple of Minecraft videos, and that was uh, my Ultra Hardcore World a very long time ago. Um, I've also made tons of videos in the past um, from Minecraft Space Engineers and a few other things, but 
nothing, nothing too important. I do plan on making some content for uh, some tutorials and things, because there's not a lot of tutorials about Barony on YouTube, so this run that I'm currently uh, playing, recording, streaming, and all of that, uh, I'm going to be breaking it down into footage for, say, tutorials. And we pretty much cleared out this place, so we can just keep moving forwards. Next area. This is the final floor on, um... This is the final floor on the forest level, the swamp level. We're just gonna run, you know, kill a few things and keep moving. Uh, there's the exit. I'm just gonna take a quick peek over here. There's a little spider. We're just gonna kill the spider, and grab this potion, and then get on out of here, because you don't need to fully explore each and every level. Check for ghouls. No extra ghouls. Uh, when is the next Twitch stream? Honestly, I have no idea. I, I don't actively want to be in a large crowd right now. Um, personal reasons. I don't want to don't wanna go into too much details. Spooter God Bonk? Wait, Suspect, is that you? Is that you, Suspect? Okay, Scarabs? Scarabs are... Scarabs are resistant to any sort of magic damage, um, but for the most part, things in the game are not resistant to physical damage. So, I'm just gonna run on through, smack everything I can, until we find our secret exit. Now, this is the special exit on this level. Um, human go poof. Speaking of which, I did mention that that place was a great place to get axe skills. Uh, at 100 axes, these will no longer break, so now we can get rid of all of the extras, and the single axe is good enough. Uh, it's Honk! Oh! Yo, what's up? What's up? A long time! It's been a while. I know I haven't been too active. Um, I've been speaking to Mintblock. I, I'm gonna be opening up the Elysia server, so... I might pop in there every now and then and, you know, play around, but for the most part, I just... I just want to open up for the community. It doesn't make sense for me to just hide it. So it's something for you to look forward to. I don't know if I'm going to make an announcement or anything like that. But, hey, you know, something to look forward to. Um, this is Sokoban. Sokoban essentially is just a bunch of boulders. You want to push these boulders into these giant pits. Um, if you don't mess up, you will get some special gauntlets that gives you magic resistance. These are my favorite items. This is my favorite item in the entire game. You can only ever get one of them unless you dupe the items. Um, I don't recommend duping items, but you know, it's it's technically possible. Only a thing. Gonna lurk? Hey, no worries, man. You have a good one. Thank you for coming in and saying hi. I appreciate that. So we're just gonna push all of these boulders uh, into the into these little spots. Push that one in there, push this one in over here. I'm gonna push this one just to the side so that um, once we push this one all the way, we can just run and then get this guy in a hole over there, not needing to adjust it too much. Um, I could push that one all the way through, but it's technically gonna be in the way of this one or block of this one. So I'm just moving them around and move this one all the way down. At this point, you know, I kind of have to do a thing. And Sokoban is complete, so we can grab those gauntlets. Uh, these give you three armor and 50% magic resistance. So with the ring, we now take one third of the magic damage. And we're just gonna grab all of the gold, because again, why not? You can technically skip it. 8,000 gold, that's plenty of gold, unless you wanna buy everything in the shops, but usually there's not too much of value, so I'm not gonna be too based of that. Um, this door is locked. I'm literally just going to use a pickaxe 
and break the wall next to it. Now, I could have just broken my way through the door, and that's totally fine if you want to do that. Um, but I'm not too fast. We have plenty of pickaxes for the rest of the game. What we don't have is a way to the exit. Also, that guy is using hunting arrows. I really dislike hunting arrows. We might puke now and get rid of all of our food in our stomach. Mm, looks like we got lucky that we didn't do that. Also, here's the exit. Again, you don't need to grab everything on a level. It's not necessary. You can just get the bare minimum. That, that trap door will take us to the next floor, but there's always going to be this over here. This is the Minotaur Maze level. Hey, there's a shop. Okay, we're paralyzed. It's not too big of a problem. I feel like at this point we also don't need this lantern anymore, so I'm actually just going to throw that away and permanently equip the shield. Get extra AC. Now we've got 29 AC. Uh, if we block, we get plus 12. That'll be 41, so technically, technically we can kill the Minotaur, take a little bit of damage. Um, we don't have enough health to kill the Minotaur, even with that technicality. Um, so I'm just going to run on through, I think. I could drink a healing potion and show you guys, um, but you need about 45 armor points to be able to kill the Minotaur. I'm also going to drop that Ring of Conflict. I uh, really don't care too much about it. I'm going to keep the Olympic swimming. Usually worth having. Uh, we're going to eat this fresh bread. The bread hits the spot. That means I can eat another piece of food. And now we are really full. Once you get that message, you know uh, that you're fine. I'm going to drink this cloudy potion. Because why not? Okay, so uh, the moment you cross this wooden bridge or grab this orb, uh, the Minotaur will spawn. I think I am just going to grab the orb and run. So we're just going to grab the orb and make our way out of here. It's technically possible to come on through this wall, just dig through that. Um, that'll kind of break you out in this little corner where we are at now. Um, this one right over here. And it can save you some time. It's not really necessary. If you don't know the way through the Minotaur Maze... It might be worth looking up a map, but it always spawns in the same layout, so it's completely possible for you to memorize the, the layout if you so choose. Uh, over here, if you put the orb down, you can come and grab Gunnir. I'm going to leave Gunnir because we don't really need it. Uh, I will come up here and grab that potion of speed just because I feel like using it at some point. I don't know when, but hey, you know what? That's a thing. Uh, is there a way to level block quickly? I barely get past 50. The only real way to level block is by blocking. So, um, you'll want to find, like, a bug or something. It says Conan. No, no, that's a regular human. He does have a steel axe. And remember, humans... Their things are never cursed, so we just got a worn steel axe. Nice little upgrade. Uh, the moment I find an NPC that I can block against, I'll show you. So, um, I wouldn't do it against scorpions. If you, if you get paralyzed, that wouldn't be a good thing. Um, garibs, slimes, rats, uh, some skeletons, anything. Anything really, but the, the key point is you want to just hold block let them hit you. Your shield will break eventually. And when you just equip a new shield, have a ton of them on your hotbar. So. Okay, I can't let that scarab hit me and show you. But, um, yeah. You basically just want to find something and just constantly block. It's a very long process. Um, technically, it can be worth it. But, I mean, if you consider that I have 30 AC and simply with 35 block... I get an extra 12 AC. So, you know, 42 AC is nothing to laugh at. At 45, the Minotaur will no longer do any damage to you. So it's technically not 
needed to level up your blocking. Um, but if you do want to level up your blocking as much as you possibly can, uh, you just want every single thing that you find to hit you. So over here, this is a troll. I know I have enough AC to um, just let him hit me. And as you can see, my shield ability has improved. Shield ability has improved. Uh, just wait for a little bit more. Uh, trolls bounce. I'm going to put on the other shield. There we go. Shields improved again. Uh, wooden shield got damaged. Shields improved. Wooden shield got damaged. Shields improved. So with that quick interaction in this troll, um, I just increased my blocking worth quite a few points. You know, I think we went from 34 to 41. Um, but again, you know, you don't need to get 100 in blocking. It's not necessary. Um, it could be nice for the magic reflection shields, but magic resistance is king in this game. Taking less damage overall will take you far further in the game than any sort of uh, general blocking will for magic reflection. Because magic reflection generally tends to break, unless, like I said, you've got a max amount of blocking. So this here level is going to be quite troublesome. I don't know where the exit is, and it looks like this one wants to be a bit of a maze. This is always my least favorite area. Just keep your eyes open for those traps on the floor. Those things can be quite brutal. Uh, I'm going to drink these fountains. They might bless my equipment. Uh, considering I've got three legendary items, if that gets blessed, that's awesome. If this magic resistance ring gets blessed, that's awesome. Um, if my plus one steel axe gets blessed, that's awesome. Uh, but we also grab the mystical red orb, which we're going to mainly use just to buy ourselves a plus three excellent crystal axe. That is going to be our end game item. That's what we're going to use to kill the twins. Uh, now this guy dropped a worn iron, sh worn steel shield. This might just be uh, another magic resistant shield. And if it is a magic resistant shield, I'm going to be very happy because it might not be cursed. Okay, so it is a magic resistant shield. Unfortunately, it's cursed. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, we could equip it. We're probably going to be running around with a shield in an offhand permanently. It's only negative one. That means we'll lose one armor. Um, I think I'm just going to do it. We'll just equip it on our fan. We're not planning on using any books or anything fancy or special. So uh, now we have 75% magic damage reduction, which means instead of taking one spell and dying, we need to take four spells before we die. We also just got an Alembic. Now, with the things that we just got, that's actually enough to make an extra healing potion. I feel like one extra, extra healing potion isn't going to break the game. Uh, if you do know alchemy, it's always great to know what you can make using Alembic, since having an Alembic just to combine potions in general is really nice. Uh, but I'm just going to make that one extra healing potion and leave the Alembic behind. I'm not going to be playing with too many extra bits and pieces that other players might not have. I will grab any potions on the floor just in case it might be something nice. Uh, these demons, sometimes they like doing melee, sometimes they like throwing fireballs. This one over here seems to be throwing fireballs, so I'm gonna hide behind a little bit of a pillar and then just get rid of them before they get to me. Grab that book, grab these staffs, I don't know why, we technically don't need them anymore. Uh, and that's the scroll of charging. So sometimes, if an item is cursed, you can still use it and it won't be harmful. This specific one, booze, is harmful. Not only will you become drunk from drinking it, you'll actually lose health. Um, also, we still have three levitation potions. We could technically float on over. And you know what, I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm actually going to do that. So uh, this is where you would go for the library. Now, I don't normally come to the library unless I want the blue orb. And that's the reason we're coming here this time. Uh, or magical books, some scrolls like this one's enchant weapon. That's really nice. Uh, that's just a cloak of protection. I'm not too bothered. You can also find spell books, um, but we're not going to be doing anything with the spell books. So if I see spell books, I'm going to ignore them. 
If I see scrolls, I'll loot them. The gems, I'll leave. If I see potions, I'll see what they are. Um, we got one healing, one mana, uh, another fruit juice. So, again, if we had an Alembic, I could combine the speed and fruit juice. That'll give us an invisibility potion, combined invisibility with restore magic, and that would give us a another extra healing. And this Alembic is cursed. Which is actually not so great. I'm going to make a cursed invisibility. And I'm going to show you that even if the potion you're mixing is blessed, because the Alembic is cursed, the potion you're going to get is always going to be cursed. Now, this says I'm going to heal by 143. That's technically a lie. I only healed for half that amount. And on top of that, I got some sort of a debuff. In this case, uh, we got cursed. I mean, we got, um, uh, we, we ended up taking a, um, a bit of poison damage. So, something to keep your eyes open for, you know, you don't want to do that. I actually am going to just do one more, um, because, you know, it's a curse potion, it's not a huge deal. Uh, let's take a look at the scrolls. That's a scroll of identify. Notice everything has been identified. I haven't been grabbing every single piece of loot in the game, uh, but we do have 100 in appraisal. So, you don't need to loot vigorously trying to grab everything you can. It is completely possible to get what you need simply by running through the game, normally. Now, I don't have levitation, but I do have a pickaxe, so I can break for the wall here. See what's in that chest. We'll grab the green orb, we'll see what this necklace is. That's just sex change. Nothing interesting. Um... Don't care about that. We're going to see what's in this chest. Nothing. Uh, we'll grab the gold and just keep on moving. Okay. So that's just where the hat was and other things. Uh, nothing too fancy or special. Uh, more magical books. Again, I'm not too bothered by magic where we chose not to do any magic this run. I always do magic uh, just because it's one of those why nots. I mean, I have 16 points in magic, I have 16 intelligence, so if I want to learn a book, right now I can learn up to 32 points in magic. Uh, this gnome just zapped me, as you can tell, with all of my magic resistance, he doesn't do too much to me. That's why I generally advise going magic resistance all the way. You just become so tanky, and uh, the boss fights are magic fights. So if you can become tankier during boss fights, uh, you know, you, you give yourself a little bit more of an advantage. We're gonna see what this guy has. He's got mana potions. He's got destroy armor. Uh, not too phased with what he's selling. If he was selling healing potions, maybe. If I was doing alchemy, I'd buy the mana potions. But I'm not too fast with the junk that he has. We're not using magics, we're not using mana. We're not crafting potions, so... Again, you know, we don't need the mana. A book of magic map. Now that's... That's always nice to have. Um, unfortunately, you know, again, we're not going to be able to use it. Also got to drink all of this booze. We're drunk, but, you know, it's... We're going to go into a pretty scary area. An area a lot of people don't like to go to. Um, this is again just me kind of showcasing that you don't need to grab everything to be able to play the game. Uh, if you've never been to Hell before, you are in for a treat. It's a pretty crazy location. Okay, so again, I'm just going to kill everything in my path. Let him hit me, because why not? We'll drink this levitation potion, because why not? Um, we've got two magic reflection amulets. I'm going to equip one right now. And we're going to equip our pickaxe. Go on through here. Now, this is where you'd want to use those magic staffs from earlier. To either zap the shadow that just came on me, or the imps in the area. But again... You know, I'm not going to be dealing with all of them. We're just going to skip it. Uh, we found a remove curse scroll. So I'm going to remove the curse off of this shield. I know this is the one I have equipped, but we could just 
block until it breaks. It's not a big deal. I'm also going to drink this Cursed Extra Healing Potion. Um, and then we're just going to try and find the exit. I don't want to take too much damage in this area. If we kill the Goatman, we could potentially get some... Some healing potions. But if they have, like, magic like this guy, um, that's going to make it a little bit difficult. If there's imps like that guy over there, uh, they're a little bit difficult to deal with, so... I don't know. And of course, demons. Demons are always a bane in your rear end. that You don't really want to deal with them too much. I can tank some damage. It's not too much. We have plenty of healing potions. But I prefer to avoid as much damage as we possibly can. Uh, I'm also going to drink this booze, just because why not? This imp has moved... Oh, the imp went over the spikes and died, okay. We're just going to look for the exit. Exit's actually this way. We've seen the exit. It's flickering on a minimap right now. And this guy is currently breaking my magic reflection. That's not something you want to have happen. In fact, it might be an idea to remove the magic reflection if you know you're going to be tanking a few spells. We'll just drink some of those potions. Uh, I'm actually just going to dodge and weave over here. And I'm just going to go to the next area. We don't need to kill everything. And I'd much rather not deal with... The imps fireballs. Fireballs are devastating. Hey, okay, so this shield broke, which is fine. We had an extra magic resistance shield on hand. We kind of plan for that. I also see the exits in the top left over here. Um, we are currently on floor 23 of hell. That means this will take us to the Baphomet fight. Now, if you've never fought Baphomet before, he can be pretty scary, pretty dangerous. Um, and after you finish killing him, that's when the fun really starts. But we're just going to take him quick and easy. We're pretty fast. Um, yeah, that should be fine. I'm going to just bring two healing potions quickly because we I know we're going to take some damage. Uh, that's magic reflection. I'm going to put an extra magic reflection on my hotbar. Uh, I'm going to remove the ring from my hotbar because we don't need to accidentally take that off. And Baphomet has three stages. The first stage, he's here in the middle. He's going to spawn a few monsters. Um, seems like he spawned a demon and shadow. I'm going to let the shadow tank the magic for me and then let the demon tank a bit of the magic for me. Uh, I'm going to run up the side of this demon and I'm just going to get rid of him. Uh, this is the third phase. The third phase, he likes to spawn a bunch of boulders. Uh, these boulders will roll and kind of kill you. He also then spawns in a bunch of imps and stuff which can potentially kill you. Um, I'm just going to try and avoid some of them. Now up close and personal, if he does that fireball spam, that could be devastating if that does hit you. So you generally want to try and avoid um, taking any of that directly. Uh, I'm just going to run all the way up here. Let the uh, boulders kill the most of the hostile NPCs. Kill Baphomet. And now we have a few choices. We can either stand around and kill everything in this arena. Or we can leave. I know that if I wanted to, I could probably very easily kill everything. But I'm just going to leave. That is probably the safer strat. Um, like I said, you know, I could probably kill everything. It's not a big deal. But we're just going to go to Hamlet. And we're going to go to the next areas. So in Hamlet, the first thing I like to do is come down into the sewers and up this hatch. Uh, you will grab five potions of extra healing as well as restore magic over here. If you're a mage, you know, grab the extra healing. Um, sorry, grab the restore magic if you're a um, physical fighter or something. Um, everyone could use the extra healing. 
If you have an alchemist, they can come here to duplicate them. Uh, but another reason why I'm coming down here is to give this guy the red orb. And then you will be able to buy some melee weapons. Uh, in this case, we're going to buy the plus three excellent crystal axe. Um, we're also going to give him the mystical blue orb. Uh, that allows you to either buy the Sherur legendary mace, or you can buy an enchanted feather. I'm going to buy the enchanted feather because why not? Um, and then these blank scrolls, we have the enchant weapon. It's called Yum Yum. It's the labeled. Uh, so if we use one of these enchanting feathers, uh, we can look for Yum Yum in this list, and that will be the enchant weapon. So there's Yum Yum. One, two, three. And that was all that it had to offer. Uh, we're going to equip. You need to make sure that your weapon is equipped if you want to do an enchant weapon. That's one, two, three, four. Uh, now we have a plus seven crystal axe that does 19 damage, plus another 19 from our strength. So we hit for a total of 46, and that's just a quick attack. So we're hitting pretty hard right now. In fact, we're hitting hard enough that we could probably go and kill the twins already. Which is just what we're going to go and do. Um, again, I'm just going to come to all of the shops. Uh, just going to buy their health potions. It's not too big of a deal. I'm not going to make any new potions. Uh, I like to do that, but you don't need to do it to get away with it. And we're also going to check for some blank scrolls. This guy has a magic mapping scroll. I'm definitely going to buy that. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any blanks. I'm going to grab that. That's just a destroy armor. Um, there's always a book back there. This one is cure ailment, but we don't need it. So, again, just going to leave it on the floor. This cleric always has a blessed shield of magic resistance. We have a shield of magic resistance, but it's not blessed. So I'm just going to recruit him. He'll die eventually, and we'll just grab his thing. Uh, here's a magician. He will always have a magic resistance ring. And I believe a four intelligence robe. The cleric, the guy of the shield, will always have a five AC intelligence robe. So here we've got a blessed shield of magic resistance. Um, I'm just going to use this. I'm not going to be too fussed. Drop the other one. Uh, I am looking for the barbarian. The barbarian usually has really great armor. Also going to come here, you know, buy all of the potions, uh, buy all of the potions, might as well buy all of the beer. It doesn't make sense not to buy the beer, it's extra healing, uh, even though it's 5 points, this here will heal us by almost 100 health. It's also extra food, so, you know, that's always nice. Uh, here's 3 blank scrolls, over here is 4 more blank scrolls, extra healings, Fruit juice, speed, and a whole bunch of other things that I can potentially, you know, grab and use. Um, but I'm not too faced. I'm just going to buy the healing potions. This is the Barbarian. He always has that helmet. Uh, amazing armor. If you need some good armor. Now, we don't. We're in essentially full legendary. Um, so we're fine, for the most part. There's one thing I do want to do, though. And that is just pop in over here. These guys sometimes sell scrolls of repair. There's one. Uh, one scroll of repair isn't too much, but you know what? I could use that on the shield, and that would be good for us. I'm also going to use this enchanted feather while we're here. Uh, just make all of the enchant weapon scrolls that I possibly can. So we're just going to use all of these. Um, we have a charging scroll, which is great. So we can recharge our feather. Again, make a few more enchant weapons. That is all of them. And at this point, we're strong enough to win the entire game. So I'm literally just going to go to the end right now. Oh, right. Um, so again, Alembic. Alembics are really great for combining potions. Not necessarily making any potions. Uh, but over here, you can see our potions are kind of like a separate stack. So we'll combine that one. Uh, we'll combine these two. And then we'll combine that five. Now I have 16. I have 11 potions, they're all stacked, and they're not taking up as much inventory space. I'm just going to drop the Alembic again, because you don't need to hold on to them, if you don't want to. I could also grab the uh, bottles of water, or use these empty bottles, 
on these sinks to get some more water and if I use the Alembic van I could potentially combine the um, combine the potions to get um, extra healing or uh, duplicate what I have but the chance of that happening is generally very low so I'm not gonna bother too much energy for that I'll equip the Olympic yeah, swimming there is some water on this map I um, don't plan on swimming I just plan on looking for the exit and moving on now so far we've only played barony for an hour and 20 minutes uh, the exits in the top left and we're essentially strong enough to win the game and we're not even trying to speed run we're, we're just running around kind of casually um, killing things in our way while grabbing things along the way you know just looking for some of the key items uh, my health is kind of low after a boulder hit me and that guy uh, these levels can be dangerous so i'm just gonna drink an extra healing potion over here uh, heal myself up a little bit um if you have legendary and axis you can quite literally kite these crystal golems um legendary and axis not only will your weapon never break uh, degradation chance you can see yours is zero uh, you get extra uh, 10 extra damage and three seconds of slow so definitely worth now all of those npcs that were following me died i wasn't paying attention to where they are on the map um looks like they're right over here uh there's an excellent plus two magic resistance thing i don't know where any of the other npcs are but you know i'm gonna grab these glasses because why not they're blessed they're better than what we have and this axe i'm gonna drop will use the crystal axe i don't know why i'm holding on to the other one uh this is a cursed ring of regeneration cleric will always drop it um really great if you are a succubus or an incubus he also likes to drop a extra healing potion sometimes it's cursed sometimes it's not um and a cloak i'm gonna equip the cloak i don't really need to i'll use this scroll repair on it uh just to fix it up a bit it's five armor really good for the ac uh, right now we are at 41 armor which is pretty pretty strong it's pretty damn strong and i'm just gonna kill everything on my way while i run around looking for a blinking red dot on my minimap uh over here there is a shop definitely worth poking your head into the shop seeing if they're selling any potions or this guy is selling scrolls now we don't have any more feathers so that kind of sucks but identify destroy destroy magic mapping is nice um and then there's charging yeah so we we found some more magic mapping um i'm gonna use those for the last four floors they're generally a little bit harder to find the exit with um here's the cockatrice these guys are generally very difficult to deal with but if you have a slow of some kind um it's a lot easier i'm also gonna put you know i'm just gonna drink these beers i'm very full so i'm not gonna drink too much more and we're just gonna get rid of the crystal golem okay that guy has fire arrows but we'll just hide around the corner uh, get rid of him quickly easily it's no big deal uh, here's a cockatrice again like i said as long as you have some sort of a slow uh, they're not too big of a deal you can just constantly slow them and make sure they don't get close i don't have a slow spell but you'll want to do the same thing with minotaurs which is what i was saying earlier and the, the whole section we were fighting path um if you have some kind of a slow it's pretty easy and if you explore the underworld there's the chances are you'll have plenty of staffs of slow being dropped even if you just uh, explore hell these incubus they like to have a staff of slow on them in fact this guy dropped one right now i'm just gonna equip it because i want to show proof of concept you know he has a slow staff you can always get them very reliably in hell and in the underworld the skeletons will have them in the underworld in how uh, it'll be the incubus sometimes the um sometimes the uh what you might call them will have them as well Hurt couldn't handle. 
the goat men. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we're gonna, just going to use a uh, one of these map making scrolls and then uh, just keep finding the exit. Again, a scroll of magic mapping. We're just going to go find the exit. We're going to move on through to the end because uh, having played solo, we are more than high enough level. Level 40 is technically overkill for the for the boss fight. Um, I'm also not going to grab the levitation cloak just to show and demonstrate that you don't need some form of levitation. You can easily uh, deal with the water. You can just run around. Um, yeah, that's just a scarab. It's not too big of a deal. And our last magic mapping, uh, the exit's right next to us, which is really nice. So here we are at the boss fight. I'm going to drop any extra weight I'm going to put on my magic reflection. Uh, I'm going to put the Olympic swimming on my hotbar, just so that once the... You know what, I'm going to drop the Olympic swimming. Because again, I want to showcase that you can easily fight them without needing too much. We have plenty of healing potions. Uh, we have 75% magic resistance due to having the shield, the gloves, uh, the ring. Um, to make this a little bit more fair, I guess I could remove the ring and the gloves. Uh, we'll still have the shield, which gives me a little bit more AC. I could remove that as well, but if, as long as you have 50% magic resistance, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the gen spacers and the ring. Uh, you'll be able to fight these still. Uh, try and keep her him between you and her. And once he teleports away, you can kind of hide behind a corner and get them. Now, as long as you have healing potions, you should be fine. You don't really want to stand still when he does any of those nukes. But I know we have plenty of healing potions and we can tank a lot of this. So I'm just going to back up. She does things in a straight line, so we don't have to stress as much. Orpheus is already less than half health. And I'm just going to drink the last of those healing potions. Uh, start hitting her, Eutrus. And like I said, you know, I removed two of my magic resistance items. They're still in my inventory. I didn't drop them, but you don't really need them. You can completely do this fight without having 75% or more magic resistance. Of course, if you do use it, um, you can tank these magical spells a lot more effectively. You just kind of want to keep your eyes on your health, and uh, whenever your health gets to about half, you want to start drinking some potions. And there we go. That is the boss's dead. That is barony that we just completed in an hour and a half solo. Um, you don't need to skip everything. You don't need to full clear 100% each and every single level. It's completely possible. But yeah, you can watch the credits or cutscenes or whatever you wish on your own. Um, I'll go to the adventures archives. I don't think it'll tell you what my thing was. Um, what's the name of this guy? I think it was Lone Wolf. Yeah, here we go. All hell Lone Wolf. Um, we did no voluntary challenges, you know. We only killed seven humans, eight rats, uh, 28 trolls. Trolls are really great experience. Uh, ghouls, ghoul level, really great experience. As you can see, we didn't kill too many things. 18 skeletons. Um, if you have a infested skeleton infested level one that's about 18 skeletons just on level one we didn't do too much um five slimes eight rats you know i, I didn't do too much work with that i didn't, didn't try to speed run i didn't try to do anything crazy anything special i wasn't using magic i threw away the healing box i wasn't doing anything spectacular but yeah you just need to keep in mind some of the um the clues and things and some of these uh, suggestions or tips or stuff that I've done and you can easily do this yourself but I believe I'll leave that run where it is uh, thank you everybody for watching weird person thank you for the lurk and Smokey the Bear thank you for vibing as well I hope that you learned a few things yourself and yeah, if you guys want to see more Barony content, I am planning on adding a whole bunch of tutorials and things. If you guys want to see any of that, 
uh, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, have a good one.